Hey, hello, welcome. Um, I was asked to actually give a uh, demonstration as to how I would investigate malware that was detected in Azure Sentinel. Um, there are many ways to do this. Um, you know, there's no correct way. You know, there are many things that you can do to investigate it, but I suppose, you know, the first thing that you have to understand is that this is, you know, malicious software. So in essence, it's software that you don't want. So you want to get rid of it, but also as a cybersecurity analyst, um, what you want to do, you know, is you also want to identify, you know, what is the cause of it? How does it work? You know, asking the obvious questions, um, you know, so that, you know, going forward in future, you could place preventative measures, you know, in place so that, you know, should this uh, hacker or um, threat actor attempt to infiltrate the environment once again, um, then, well, you know, you'd be ready for it. So, yeah, let's let's have a look. So, you know, I've generated one incident here um, in the test environment. This one, as you can see, it comes from uh, Microsoft Defender in a Defender portal. So it was auto-generated from Defender and it's alerted in Sentinel. So we can see, okay, cool, this is the malware file, you know, name. So we'll click on it. You know, we can have a look. We can see it tells us a bit more about it. Here's the description, you know, what malware is. There's only one alert associated to it. Down below, we can see, you know, here are the entities involved. You know, the file name. It's got the file hash over there. It's got the, um, you know, the name of the uh, the device that was infected, as well as the times. So all of these factors, of course, you know, upon your investigation, they are very important. You know, before you, you know, conclude, that's very important to note down these things. You know, like the time, the names, the file types, the hash. You know, so that you know you could just, you know, further and warrant your case going forward. You know depending on what the outcome is going to be. So because this came from Defender, immediately the first thing I'll do is click on the link that's gonna take us automatically to Defender, all right? And this is automatically what opens up. It tells us, you know, this is the uh, the the name of the, um, uh, the malware file, right? And it says that it was prevented. So this is a good thing. It's telling us that, look, this has already been isolated. It's already been identified to um, you know, be malicious software and, you know, Defender's already taken care of that. So Defender's taken care of that great stuff, but, you know, what do we do, you know, going forward? Is this some kind of alert that we want to be, you know, uh, do, do we want this to, 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 to notify us as soon as this type of thing triggers? Well, you know, again, in future, uh, well, it's up to you as the analyst. It's up to between yourself and the client. So, Going further, we can actually see, you know, the name of this, uh, you know, these uh, the device over here. That's the the user that was involved. Um, here we can see the other entities. This was done by, you know, Explorer. Take note of the different EXEs that's been, you know, taken place. We can see the location, um, you know, of this file. The location, so that's important to note down. So I would, of course, correlate this information and say, okay, you know, this information is is over here. All right, um, you know, and then that would be just something else that I could use. And if I wanted to investigate any other, um, you know, uh, if I want to investigate any other device that might have contracted the same bit of malware. So what else I'm going to do is, okay, we can see the file path. Here, this is also very important. This is the hash file, the hash value, all right? And that's the encryption type, the SHA-1. All right, so you know you could click and copy that. Now bear in mind this information you can get this from Sentinel as well. All right, this is just an easier way that I'm going to click on it just to you know uh, jump there automatically. Um, in an ideal situation, what you would do is you know uh, you know you could build a playbook you know to do this automatically for you. Um, sorry, let me just get here. I'm going to go over to Virus Total Art now. I'm just googling that. All right, and then I'm going to you know, just click on this. Well, not, I'm just going to do a click on search and I'm going to dump the hash in there. Press enter and you'll see what it comes back with. Well, it says undetected. Well, this is one of the practices that you would do. This is saying, well, this is identifies with WinRAR. That's interesting. What other hashes are there that we can use? You know, is there anything else? Well, we don't know. Let's look further. Um, was that the same hash value? Was it, is it in one for one? No, there's a different one. Let's take this one and pop this in over here, shall we? There we go. So we can see that, you know, this is definitely holds characteristics of this type of malware. So we could see based on this and comparing it to the previous uh, hash value that I just loaded up, we can see a clear difference. 
this one on all its databases and networks it is you know telling us that well this you know it's highlighted in red it's obvious that you know this is definitely definitely malicious software right so here's some more details about it um, where it comes from where it's been seen so at least you know this will this you could add to your investigation all this information it's very useful um, here's some relations you know to where else you would find you know this information uh, or this hash value so we can see the different relations between you know where this hash value exists let's have a look at the behavior um, you know this is you know just what has occurred in the past with you know different directories here you can see here's a set of registries that you know um, has been recorded in previous events um, let's have a look at the community well you get the idea uh, this is not the only place that you could you know perform this kind of search um, you know you could probably go to you could probably google something like file hash checker you know that is you know just me uh here you go seven free hash checkers that's you know pretty pretty cool here's a here's a file checksum you could probably drop files here um you know and i know defender allows this to allows you to actually download the file but um yeah moving along this was just one example of how you would you know check the hash value um let's look a bit further um what else we can see the different files you know on the computer that you know uh, in this this particular bit of malware you know in fact um uh interferes with here's a bit more about the file when it was generated on the detection source and so forth this tells you here's some recommended actions that you should probably do uh, but we'll get into that in a bit let's just go back to sentinel so you know we've got our entities we've got more information about the file we know for sure that look differently is malicious we know the locations of the file um, let's go ahead and look at the full details we'll you know and let's go con you know conduct an investigation in sentinel over here about you know what else is happening so here's the entities um, if we click on this over here um, we can also see that you know this is a bit more about the device um, the OS version you know so this also helps us build us build our case you know so the whole thing about you know security and investigations is triaging you know um, does it fall within the same range you know what are the similarities between this does any any other device you know infected you know um, and we can also click on you know this is just gives us a bit more about what they said in Defender you know in case of like you know what's actually happening with that file where it came from where's the source here's the hash values so you know in sentinel you could actually get to you know a lot of different information you know directly from here all right so in this case what i would do you know once i have enough information i mean you could go into insights there isn't so much information there this is just more of the same um just to help you along what you could also do is well not there sorry um if you click on the you know view all um, you could click on the uh, similar incident section where this would show you a list of incidents that are similar in nature it really helps with triaging so check that out what would also help is if you checked for any other incidents you know similar in nature that may have occurred in the last 90 days you know so in this case what you would do you know in sentinel is you would have a look you know this is what i like to do um in this case you know, we'll use this you know this, this test file as an example you know i would just type in search you know um and i'll type in and just get that icar test file you know i'll search across all tables all right type in distinct and then the dollar and table all right this will search for you know where this shows up in all the different tables so you could so you know as a result in the last 24 hours you could see that you know this is listed in the not only the security alerts but the security incidents and then what you want to do is you, you want to identify what else has been affected by this you could do this by searching in these data sets um yeah so looking at the um you know also you could you could vary the search you could you know just for you could search just for for icar um you know but of course you know this depends on the type of malware that it is or you could search just for malware and you could vary the time range as well you know just to see if there has been anything in the last 14 to 90 days just to add to your case you know further to investigate it um 
what you also want to do is, you know, based on what you find over here in the different data sets is, you know, where it came from. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in security alerts, oops, not incident, security alerts, and I'm going to hit search for, you know, um, I'm just going to search for, for ICAR this time. Um, just give me a sec. And we'll find, okay, cool. So in this list, we can see in the last 24 hours, this these are all the entries, of course. So we can see that, you know, let's see if we can pull any information from here, you know, further. This is giving us a link to, you know, Defender Portal. Um, yeah, so, you know, as we can see, there have only been three entries. These, of course, on the same day. So, yeah, you would use the same sort of tactic to, you know, investigate over the last, you know, 14 to 90 days to further your case, you know, if you were to, you know, report that. Um Also, what you would like to do, whether it is in Defender or in um, Sentinel, you know, based on the search results, you also want to identify if this has taken place on any important devices, such as, you know, servers, such or important hosts that perhaps maybe run, you know, specific apps that are important or, you know, exchange apps or, you know, exchange hosts. So it's very important to initiate, you know, perhaps full system scans or not only the endpoints, but I would say suggest um, on all of the endpoints in the environment just to be safe. In this instance, you could also go to, you know, um, Defender, all right? Um, and you could go directly to, let's just see if we go to the, um, the internet to go manage the alert. No, we'll just go to, so when we get to that section where it takes us to the actual device where we could see, you know, the device that was, you know, affected by this. Um, over here, device, you could click on it, you could go to the device and you could actually, you know, open the device page and from here, you could isolate the device, all right? Now, this is not always a great idea because this would, you know, kick this device off the network. What this would do, you know, they wouldn't be able to, you know, initiate any sort of function unless they actually, unless you, you know, you, you remove the setting, this option, you know, from unisolate, you unisolate it, and only then would they be able to proceed. They'd be very limited in everything that they can do on the device, but this is, of course, you know, um, for safety. Um, depending on the risk that has, uh, you know, over here, depending on what has actually transpired on the device, you you know you could um, you know you need to take further action depending on the policies uh, or the processes of the client that you are servicing. You know, um, it really depends on you know what their their policies are, their change control. So you know we can't just go isolating these sorts of things. And speaking of isolate, if we go back into um, you know Sentinel. And we go to actions, you know, you not only can you run a playbook from here, but you could, you know, create an automation rule, right? And what you could do is you could, you know, use this automation rule to either auto close or, you know, if it meets certain criteria, if you wanted to create, you can also go into um, the the automation section and create a playbook, all right? Um, let's see over here, blank playbook, this should also be, should I say, um, there we go, playbook templates, you know, where this could automatically isolate a device. So just have a look over here. Let's just, let's see. Isolate endpoint. So, you know, you use this one over here, MDE, right? You could program this to automatically isolate the, um, the device, you know, um, and you could, you know, adjust your settings, like whether or not, you know, an email gets sent out to a responsible person, you know, or whether or not, you know, the person doesn't, uh, you know, they don't come back to you, then you could set a timer on this. If no, you know, uh, no response is received, you know, then it will automatically isolate the device. Um, yeah, that's, you know, on, you know, at a glance, that's what I would do and how I would investigate malware. Um, you know, using Sentinel as well as Defender. Um, yeah, uh, if there are any questions on this, feel free to comment below and I will definitely engage. I hope that this was informative. If there are any questions, drop them below in the comments. Thanks a lot. Cheers.